Our heroes have survived their hangover and afternoon tea with the Queen. Elspeth may have put her foot in it a bit, but are we really surprised? As we left our Skyons, they had entered the void to Idrasil. Let's hope they survive its horrors. <laughs> And welcome to a rendezvous with Destiny, a Sky on Actual Play podcast. As ever, I am your GM, Luce, and with me today I have. Hi, I'm Graham. I play the character of Elspeth Lockwood, the Guardian of Balder. Um, I myself have a nice big cup of tea, which is great. Elspeth is in like a weird cosmic void with um, scary evil <laughs> deities, so that's less great. So we'll see how it pans out. Hi, I'm Will. I play Cleo Brewer, who is a chosen of Bast. Uh, Cleo's walking on air right now because she got a pretty girl's number. Uh, Will is slightly less walking on air, but is going to go and get um, some takeout for lunch. So ooh, feeling good ooh, about that. Solid. What takeout are you getting? Uh, either Nando's or KFC. I've yet to decide, which big is very fancy. Day, you. I know. Uh, very ch- yeah, big chicken day. Hello, lovely Skyons. Uh, I am Am, and I play Flora Watson, daughter of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. Uh, Flora's a little bit trepidatious, you know. Staring into the void, the void can stare back. Mm. Um, but I think she's definitely going to do something incredibly stupid, and I can't wait. Well, for of course she is. You're going to do incredibly like, you know, stupid things. Um, you know, in have, if any of you guys have played Portal Two, oh, I love with the Portal. Space Core, who's like yes. space, space. I'm in space. I'm about to space. space. I love space. I, I love that game. Speaking. It's so fun. Of video and computer games. Mm. Graham has been getting up to some computer shenanigans recently. Graham, yeah. why don't you tell the so, lovely Skyons what you've been up when to? When we started recording today, Am, Am said to me, we, we, don't, we talk about our little audio, and Am said, yeah, you have a bit of background noise. I was like, I won't now because I rebuilt my computer. And then I realised when we were saying this that um, I am just a far less sexy Henry Cavill, which is, I think, I'll take it, but it's a bit sad. Which I also, I He's like to single, imagine... single, ladies and gents. Yeah, well, apparently... Um, I like to imagine Thor as built like Henry Cavill in in this world. Yes, he doesn't look yeah, like him. Um, the yes. face is different. Henry Cavill is like body body wise. Henry Cavill is pretty much what Thor is yeah. happening there. Just a wide boy. Very wide. <laughs> I like to think Cleo has like a little bit of Geralt in her personality. Y- Does that make you yes? The WD team as as like a Henry Cavill character. I think we should. <laughs> Who would I be as a Henry Cavill character? He, he does play like a type of character, and I don't know if we half of our team actually fits yeah. that type. Um, uh, well, I don't care because my character does. So. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good I way think to think Flora about this. I think Flora is definitely... Flora did... I definitely took a lot of inspiration from Yaskia for Flora. Yeah, that, yes, that is that on That makes brand. too much sense. <laughs> I'm typing Henry Cavill The best IMDb character of the Witcher search. novels. I, I love Dan him. Yes, he's the best. He he's very good in um, uh, the Man from Uncle. That's oh. a very enjoyable. Oh, oh yes, that is, I think, movie. my favorite film. I actually haven't um, seen it. That makes Ooh. sense. It's oh, it's such really a good. good. Everything about... I do is like the character I had for um, so Ev was a mix of Henry Cavill from so Napoleon Solo from the Man from Uncle and um, Neil Caffrey from White Collar. I so... can see that. <laughs> I yeah. can see that. <laughs> it tracks. So this IMDb page has just reminded me that um, he played Sherlock Holmes last year, which was wild. Oh, that, again, fantastic. He was really movie. good. At I that. enjoyed that a lot. That's actually. a great movie. I've not, I've not, a, a I've not yet, yet watched it, but it's a good time. Millie, Bo- Millie Bobby Brown slightly irritates me in a lot of things that 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 I that I witness her in. So I will build up to it one for, day. For this is what gets well cancelled. Um, for Luce's <laughs> Henry Cavill character. I would like to propose the foppish rich boy from um, Stardust. Oh, yes. I like yes. that. Yes, yeah. that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm just looking at him now. That tracks. Um, that tracks I, so hard. Yeah. I think we definitely got some... Probably Geralt for Will. And I think Sherlock for Graham. Are we doing... Oh, so I thought those we were doing the my, characters. Those... Okay. Oh, well, those are my pictures Yeah, that makes y'all. sense. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Well, we've completed it, guys. 
I'm available for hire as a casting director. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of Sherlock Holmes, um, I really I don't know if this is a cold take or not, but my favorite Sherlock Holmes uh, adaptation is the Robert Downey Jr. Jude Law one. It yep, is surprisingly good. The correct take. I think there is talk of them making a third one. Yes, really? give it to me. Brilliant. It, it was, a, it was just wait. great. Um, like Rachel McAdams was again very good as um, Irene Adler as well, um, and that sort of yeah. thing. Did they kill her off them. in that film? Um, no. Yes, but in a way that she could be brought back. Okay. And it wouldn't yeah. be too hand wavy. Nice. Because you don't actually see her dying. Which it's is also a very person. Sherlock thing to do. It's, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like get... the original kind of well, not the original cliffhanger, but you know, when they just chuck Sherlock off the. Um, I mean, he wasn't supposed to come back, back though. It's just yeah, everyone but, demanded yeah. him back. People like essentially yeah. just like cried at Sir Arthur Conan Doyle enough that he was like, "Oh, fine, I will bring him back," and he absolutely hated it. It's hilarious because he wanted to go off and do it ghost was... conspiracy theories the whole time and yeah, thought about fairies. Weird man. <laughs> you fairies. know the, the fairy thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We with the girls where it was with the, the fake photos, cutouts. and he was yeah. really obsessed with it. And he was like, "It's yeah. real, guys! It's real!" And everyone's like, "These are obviously." He was fake. a very His strange Harry person. Houdini was actually a magician and just wouldn't tell him how to use magic. I love it so much. He's just what a weird man on the rails, mm-hmm. but they're very different. I'm fine with us. that though because sometimes I will say to Will, "Hey, if I told you I was in a Groundhog Day, would you believe me?" And he says, "No." Like, really what you should me. say is, "Did I believe you last time?" Ah. <laughs> Cool. Um, I don't know how to link this. Anyone? Uh, nah, let's just play some play some Sky. Let's do that. <laughs> you nearly cussed. Yep. But it didn't happen. Nope. Didn't get recorded. Didn't happen. Right. So, we're in the void. You're in the void. Well, you've just entered the void, and it is a void. So, you've Loki. You have your protection now. You all have those sort of ever so slightly glowing silver handprints on your face. And you, you walk through this sort of undulating black portal and it's it's not wet but it's almost mm. thick. I don't like a sentence that starts with it's not wet but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's almost like you imagine what would be like walking through treacle but it's not Ooh. sticking to you. Ooh. There's that Easy. really heavy resistance. It's incredibly grim. As you walk through, and it, you can, it's almost like that feeling of when you know it's misty and damp, and it sort of gets underneath your clothes. Yep. It's that kind of grim for you. It's almost like fingers wrapping oh. around you and crawling up your spine. I'm not big into oh this my one, God. guys. Oh It yeah. doesn't last for a long time, you think, and eventually you push through this barrier and what you see doesn't make sense you are standing on what you assume is a branch but it's very wide it's maybe 50 foot from side to side and goes off in the distance you cannot see where it ends and looking round you can see these other trailing branches and forks going on forever and as you turn around you expect to see the portal you just came through but it is gone it is not there awesome and what is what you can see instead is the shape it's too big to make sense in your mind it is the trunk of a tree but the trunk of a tree so large you can't understand how it exists and as you look around you can see that there are planets and moons and rocks the size of apples in these branches or the perspective they seem like the size of apples compared to the size of the tree but they are planets of their own my brain immediately went to eat the tree apple eat the planet <laughs> literally yeah. i was like what eat would a planet, planet taste like crunch Tasty. crunch 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 mm. mm. will bite rock mm, um. planet mm, galactus <laughs> and the colors here are startling the void was and thick and dark and cloying 
The air here is thinner, thinner than normal. You're finding, you're struggling slightly to breathe fully. You're having to take very deep breaths. And there are stars and colours and supernovas exploding all around you in vibrant pinks and purples and blues and greens and oranges that you know those photos you see of nebulas taken and taken from um hubble mm. those insane colors it's like that's everywhere you look with constellations that are spinning around in shapes and forms and stars that you've never seen you're all standing there on this branch and Loki looks round and starts to lead you towards the trunk of the tree. You're walking and you're walking for a long time and it doesn't seem to be getting any closer. It's almost seeming to shift in your vision, almost like a mirage. Everything is slightly warped and slightly off. But any of you like to do anything as you're walking towards the trunk of the tree? I want to touch the floor. What does it feel like? You want to touch the floor? Yeah. Um, feels like a branch. Mm -hmm. You know, you've climbed trees before when you were younger. Mm -hmm. Feels like a tree. Definitely a tree. Big tree. If, if, if I've got like just some stuff in my pocket, like some loose coins or something, I just like to toss it out into the abyss <laughs> and see what happens. Throw this coin off the edge. Do you look to see where it goes? Yeah. As you look down, you get a feeling of vertigo. Your head starts spinning and you want to vomit. Can I try and pull clear back? It's... you can. Yeah. Nope, 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 yeah, don't, don't it's other arm. so far, you can see this coin, and it's falling and falling and falls till you can no longer see it, but you know it is still falling, and you don't know when, if, it will reach any sort of floor. Could you please roll me? A sanity check? Composure, a cult. Yeah, a sanity check. Um, good luck. I have, I have, uh, two. This. Can any of us? So, I'm surprised I've even got Can anything. Can I give Cleo a help about. action? Um, I will let Elspeth give Cleo a help action. Okay. Okay. Um. What What does that do? Sorry. Yes. Remind me. I. It says you so sevens and up. Okay. Cool. Okay, that's still two failures. Oh, so nothing. Uh, okay. For the rest of this session, you're going to be at a slight disadvantage because your brain is your brain hurts essentially. So you're going to awesome. you have to roll. Um, so you'll be rolling one less dice whenever you roll. Okay. Cool. Yeah, what was rule four? Okay. Come on, rule four. Try not to look down slash fall off the big tree. I did tell you not to look down. Yeah, you, you told the rules, so I wrote them down. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I wasn't really listening, so... Oh, I probably should have made it more clear. Um, but try not to. It's... This place will play tricks on you. It's dangerous, but it's the only way to get to where we need to go. If there was any other... Yeah. I don't like walking these branches. Sort of just from the back of the group. Tell everybody I'm on my way. New friends and new places to see. Okay, okay, yeah, you, 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 that might get us DMCA. <laughs> you saying that I'm a singer is if good enough sing, to get us DMCA. Just... You can legally do 16 bars of any song. I, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> I think that's a personal attack more than a legal problem that Will's got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you think correctly. So, Loki. You're still walking towards, you've been walking towards the tree. It could have been for half an hour, it could have been for four hours, you don't know. Time is fluid here. But he stops at a point and whispers an incantation and cuts their hand. 
Mm. And blood doesn't drip to the tree as you're expecting. It mixes with you know, Loki's innate magic and starts to with pull its way out of the cuts on the hands. It's blood mixing with tangible magic that you can see. And it starts to form a path. It starts to form a string leading you where you need to go. And you start to follow. You walk along this branch for quite some time. And at one point, Loki stops you all and looks up, far up. You're craning your necks back and he points out something high up in the tree. It's one of those, one of the planets, one of the rocks that you saw some of earlier. And it seems to it's rotating slowly. And as you look up, you see something glinting from the top of it, and you realise that it is that is Asgard. That is where you just were. Oh. And you think it would take lifetimes to climb to where it is. Wow. And as you keep on watching along the branch that Asgard is on, yes. you see a squirrel. It's happening. <gasps> My friend. Hopping, hopping their way along. And clutched in his mouth is a letter. Oh. Just seems to be making his way towards Asgard. Oh. Loki. Um, can I turn to like can can I can I make friends with that squirrel, please? Um, if we bump into him, I'm sure he's big very friendly. Squirrel? Like Mmm, good question. <laughs> is it big the enough? Squirrel to hug? is The squirrel makes sense for the size oh, no. of the tree. Oh yes. Oh I don't wow. Know how I feel about that. Maybe we can get a maybe we can hitch a ride. Huh. Lots to think about here. What's their name? I'm just gonna look up how to actually right. pronounce this. Oh, okay, cool. So I don't mess it up. Oh my god, it's, yeah. it's, it's a cannon? It's, it's yeah. a cannon squirrel? Yeah, there's it's a, a cannon squirrel. squirrel on the world tree. There's also a big snake somewhere. We should watch out for the big snake. Yep. Well, big worm. Mm. That's Nidhogg. Wormy boy. That sounds very fun to say. Ratatoskr. Okay, ask your question again. What? What? <laughs> What's his name? Uh, that is uh, Ratatosk. He carries messages sometimes, up and down the tree between the planets, he between is the world. Shaped like a friend. He is a friend, very fluffy. Wonderful. Cool. Pretty nice sight. All that this place is horrifying. There are some good points. Well, we must walk on. Um, you realise, for a while it seemed like the tree trunk wasn't getting any closer. And you realise that's because it was so big that it, your brain wasn't computing, essentially, how big it could be. But after you've, lo- you've looked away, you've looked up at Ratatosk, and you look back, and this tree trunk fills your vision from side to side. You can't, you can turn around and see the things behind you, but in front of you is just wall, essentially, of bark. And you reach the trunk of the tree. What I want you all to roll for me now is going to be stamina athletics. Um, and I roll this with minus one dice, right? So minus one dice. Stamina, five. Well, well, Athletics uh, is three. I have... Um, three, uh, seven. I have over five. Eight overall. One, success. Two with one exploding. Two three. successes for me. Uh... Four successes for Cleo. Two successes for Flora. We all survive. The tree. Did anyone get zero successes? No. No. We are strong. Fantastic. 
Wrong. Neither did Fred or Madison. Or Loki. We good. We know it's falling off. Imagine, so, imagine if Loki just like fell off. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> well, what now, kids? Well, we're trapped here forever. As so, Loki has led you now to the trunk of the tree, and it's cracked and cratered like bark. But these cracks are huge. You could you can walk into them, and carved into them, you can see that there are steps. And Loki starts to lead you up these steps. They're steep, they're jagged, but you start climbing and you continue to climb and you climb and you climb and you climb. You don't know how long you climb for, but your hands are bloodied, your knees are scraped raw as your feet through through your clothes just this unending staircase in these tree in this tree and you have you don't know how long you climb for but you're getting tired you're getting very tired <sighs> Loki looks around and leads you you come to a place where there always seems to be a knot or a wall in the tree that's created this divot and it's large enough for the all of you to sit in safely with room to spare. Guys, my, my step count today is going to be off the charts. Oh my god, right? I can feel this in the back of my legs, like, ooh. Yeah, my feet yeah. hurt. I think my feet yeah, are still attached. Too. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I think we will rest here for like some time get our strength back we will need to be on watches while others rest we will big squirrels okay Gratatosk is a friend there are things here that aren't friendly well I hate that um, are we gonna... Do you think we should go two mm. and two, or... What? I Yes, two and two sounds like a plan. Alright. Um, I will go first. I think Madison um, should go with you. Loki looks at you, and is like, raises an eyebrow like, Really? Now? R- really? You're gonna do this now? Really innocent sure. smile. Sure, we'll run with this. Um... That's our plan. Manus and I will take first watch. Um, divides amongst ourselves who will go second and third. Um. Um, is anyone looking particularly... Oh, no, wait, so it's Manus and things, so there's... Okay, yeah, there... I was just doing maths. There are there are six of us. My bad. Well, what, what mm-hmm. don't me and Cleo go next, and then... You know... Yeah, yeah, and, and then... Has, yeah, and then I guess Laura. we'll do a left, so you should go last. Sure, early morning for oh, we us. We can swap then. if you want. Let's get some stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm, go- I'm going to sort of try to make eye contact with um, Elspeth to see if this was intentional. Get like a really <laughs> innocent look back. <laughs> okay. Try to read it if you want. <laughs> uh, no, 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 clear as not bother. Cool. Okay, so the four of you sort of wrap yourself up in your cloaks and try to sleep. Um, for a while you don't think you'll be able to but eventually you do you start to doze off your dreams are strange don't really remember what they are but there's things moving they seem to be hunting coming closer as you sleep Mm. like that for us What are you rolling? Um, enjoy it. You don't need to know. Um, <laughs> time passes and Manison and Loki wake up, wake you up, um, Cleo and Elspeth. Mm. And they both sort of try and yeah. head down, get some sleep. So, uh, you 
more often. Uh, no, it's, it's my first time. What about you? Oh my god, me, me too, actually. That's uh, such a weird coincidence, that. yeah. I know. What a weird... How are you finding it? Personally, I'm not really into the whole, like... Um, did you have some bad dreams? Uh, yeah. I thought that was just me, because, like... I sometimes do have bad dreams, but oh, like, no. Like what? Like, it feels like, I don't know, like we're being followed? I meant like your normal dreams, um, but this is, that's fine too, uh, yeah. Um, we, no, no, we, were your that's dreams fine. like that as well then, or? Yeah, um, like we're, something's looking for us. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I kind of, I was hoping it was just me, you know? Yeah, me too. Because now I feel like it's real. Uh, I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Will we have to I'm glad we fight in our it. dreams? Is that like a mythology thing? Oh, or? I feel like I'd be better if we did. Like, less time. <laughs> um, is it a mythology thing? Sometimes. Not really a Norse mythology thing, though. Right. So, probably, like, the things on the tree will just try and eat us for real. So don't worry about it. Wait. No, that came out wrong. Yeah, that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Alright. Mm. Cool. Is, is, is your cat around? I kind of want to, like, you know, hang out with something normal. Uh, I haven't seen much of her since we... Oh, no, there she is. Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> cool. When I say normal, I mean, obviously, not, not yeah. a normal cat. But does she, like... Do anything non-cat like? Not that I've seen, but I'm suspicious, so you know. Mm, she could be doing anything. Yeah. Which actually is quite like a normal cat. It is, fair. yeah. Cool. So do you think they had like a good watch together? You know. Like, um. There's there's two. I I don't know, man. Like I'm just glad that we don't. Have, that there's nothing like complicated at all going on with like. With, like, any of us. I mean, Flora sort of, but, like, not really to the same degree as those no. two. So I'm glad we can just sort of lead them to it and just, like, hang out, you know? Yeah, they seem okay. I th it's not that awkward. I wonder if it's, like, an old Skyon thing where, like, eventually you just have weird, awkward stuff in your life. Um, or you die young. I, this is very dark. I think this place is doing something to me. Yeah, you're, um, you're not as cheerful as you usually are, so... No... I thought this would be like a nice day out with a cool tree, and it is a cool tree, yeah. but it's quite scary. I think it's going to be hardest when, like, we have to wake up again and it's still dark, you know? I'm, I'm just not used to that. Yeah. It could be strange. Well, you know, we're, we're moving. Yeah, we are. I guess we are. What can you do, eh? Can both of you please roll me? Here we go. Uh oh. Cunning survival. Uh, okay, uh, I am not good at those things. Uh, um, so that's one from cunning, and none from survival. Uh, that's. Which dice should I choose? Uh, I've got one with like stars, and I think I'll go for that. I've got uh, one success. I have a success as well. Oh, yes. Oh, all is going well. You got the one success? No, we both got one, yeah. Both of you've got one. Fantastic. So two. As you are talking, keeping an eye out, you start to see movement <laughs> coming from behind you almost. You're looking out but it seems to be coming from behind you. And as you turn around you see a woman. Sort of she, she looks like a woman but something about it is strange. Too tall too thin arms too long seems to be almost extra knuckles Ooh. in the fingers and she's standing um over flora and fred nope don't like that 
and as you see that they seem to almost they have frowns on their faces and they seem to be having nightmares uh, here we go I'm gonna pull pull out my sword hey you get away from our friends uh, please or just do it yeah let's just okay fine she turns to look at you and you see there's large eyes and no mouth yeah you really need to get away from them ah she's not moving I guess we hit her with the swords. Um, I'm yeah. uh, going to just grab, like, is there, like, a loose twig or something that I can just sort of grab? Yeah. Yeah. There's a loose twig. Uh, y- yeah, just gr- grab one and turn it into, and it just turns into, like, a big pole arm. Nice. You guys need to roll me either dexterity or might earn athletics to see might. how well you're doing. I choose might. And athletics, seven dice. Please don't kill my character. Yeah. That's fine, I'm very good at this. Um, seven dice, one success. One, two, three. Uh, four successes. Nice. There was lots of dice rolling ASMR for, uh, for whoever's listening. Clitter, clatter, clatter. Okay, so um, one of you guys is up first. What do you want to do? I uh, do you want to go first, Will? Um, no, you, you you can you can take this one. Okay, I'm just gonna go in for a nice big swing with my sword. Very nice. Uh, roll to hit. Not doing anything tricky. Okay, so roll to hit is doop doop doop. Um, close combat and might. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got one, two, three successes. Nice. Yes, you um, hit with the with your swords. You just doing she uh, the woman didn't roll any successes, so you're doing just three points okay. of damage. Um, can I try and use my swords, um, my sunblade stunt thing? The sun flare. I don't really know how it works. So yes, you before. can use your I sun can do it on flare one to three thing. successes, and I got three successes. So, Bro. let's let's use them. So you hit her with your sword, and this glowing light flares out, and it's it's just too bright to look at. You have to turn your eye away from this essentially pure sunlight. That is now emanating from your sword. Um, and as you hit her, hit this creature, it, she screams as the sunlight sort of touches her face and her skin, and it starts to crack and melt. And you do. It's super effective. Good thing you did that. She is a nighttime creature, so she is weak to sunlight. <laughs> mm, so that's uh, done I, I a nice chunk of damage. That. Um, can I also yell out, um, time to wake up, everybody? Can. To mainly to Loki and Manison, because the other two seem to be being vampired. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, Loki and Manison wake up pretty sharpish, and um, Flora, you hear Elspeth crying out, and you see this bright sunlight, and you do wake up, but you know that feeling when you're awake. You can't move. Ooh. Are you talking? Are we sleep paralysis? Are you talking about sleep paralysis or <laughs> nice? <laughs> Good one. That feeling where, where you suddenly okay, wake cool. up at three o'clock in the morning, and there seems to be something standing over you. You cannot move. You cannot scream. You are stuck. I am yeah, really glad I never sleep paralysis. Do anything. <laughs> you can barely breathe. You can move your eyes, and that is it. You see this figure standing over you, long, blank, greasy hair, eyes large, eyes that are too big for her face, and just skin over where a mouth should be. And there seems to be dust trickling from her eyes, she seems to be crying sand. And you can see where Elspeth's wow, sword I hate has hit this. her, and this gash, it's disintegrating around and it's cracking up her skin 
like rock or slate when it's shattered and chunks and it seems to be cracking and dissolving crumbling apart but she's still standing there standing over you and fred um can i do something it doesn't require movement of any kind you'll need to can you roll me where you're going to be in the order so roll me um one of your physical stats and Uh, athletics and i'll do the others yes so one two three four and then athletics one two three seven dice uh okay Ooh, we got three successes when exploding three successes nice So it is an NP, it is a PC turn next, so one of you guys can go, so if you wanted to try something there. I think Cleo should go. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure thing. Um, I will, I will, I will do, do, do the usual thing. I will cast, um, hit. <laughs> <laughs> cast hit with your stick. Yes, correct. Um, I cast get Rex scrub. Yeah. Well, uh, I have been and... remembering to subtract, um... I have I have been remembering to do it by the way. Cuz I'm I'm a good boy. Okay. Uh 2 3 4 4 successes again. Very nice. And I rolled li- zero successes. So is you on that all going to damage? Uh, like like geographically I suppose we're in like this hollow is the uh, can I can I just try to like physically shunt this thing away from Flora. Yes, you can. Oh, eat it off the tree. You're gonna okay. In that case, I'm gonna need you just to roll me, roll me a d4 and tell me what you get, please. Uh, two. You push this group. You just lash up with your pole and try to push her away from from Fred. And I rolled awfully, and you rolled very well on that. So, as you push her away, she trips and falls backwards out of the hollow that you guys have been resting in. (laughs) And you remember thinking about the coin and what happened to the coin when he tossed it off the edge of the branch. And this creature just falls backwards, making eye contact with you as she falls. Okay. Can I try to grab it and stop it falling off? Or? Um, you can. Roll me. Dexterity. Okay. Athletics. So you're good at this because you have one less dice than normal. Yep. Um. <laughs> okay, one. Uh, two, two successes. You reach out to grab one of the one of the trailing hands, which seem they're almost like roots and branches rather than fingers. And you grab her wrist, but she digs her fingers into your wrist, and you let go, and she falls out of the tree. Well. Okay. Uh... Am I still paralyzed? You are no longer paralyzed. <sighs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh god. It's alright. Oh. Flora hey, come on, sit up. lets out a stream of swear words. <laughs> Fred does something similar. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't breathe. Yeah, um, I think she was draining something out of you whilst you were asleep there. I don't... Yeah, that kind of be nice. I'm gonna give Elspeth a big hug, like a scared little kid. Hug received and returned. It's alright. Oh, She's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess it's my mm-hmm. watch now, right? Uh, do you want to catch up on some sleep first? No, you guys or... go back. You guys go to sleep. It's fine. We're up now. Um, alright. We got this. Give Fred a pat on the back. Yeah, yeah we got... We got this. We got this. Oh my god. It's that fine. Sucked. No one died. We're good. No one died. This people yep. have silver. People have uh, 
Silver linings, silver linings. People have sleep paralysis in our world all the time, and they're fine. And we're Do you think fine. that's what causes it? Oh my god, Maybe. that'd be cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Cool. I have uh, you guys. That. You guys rest. We we're fine. Yeah, go through. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep again tonight. We'll take. A yeah, that, that, that is actually ninety percent of what this is. I'm not going to lie. All right. Well, let me know if anyone's sleep paralysising me. You got we'll it. Thumbs up. All right. Thanks. Rap. Well, sit back to back. One of us looking inside. One of us looking outside. Sounds good. Um, I'm gonna. Un- I'm gonna get my quiver and my bow and just have an arrow notched, not pulled up, but just like laying across my lap. Yeah. Um, tried similar. He has his sword, his great sword, and that is over his knees ready to be used. Cool. What did you dream about? Um, nothing good. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, saw saw my dad, which was Oh, like, you're disconcer- which, no, which, no, which no, dad? Um, oh, um, not um, Arthur, um, which is confusing. No, so, um, I suppose, I suppose his stepdad now thought he was my actual dad, which is confusing. Um, saw him, which was mm. disconcerting. Um, mm. haven't seen him in a hot minute. Yeah. You? Oh, um, I don't really want to. Yeah, talk that's about fine. It. Thanks. Uh, Just you know, you got you got to relive something once. You don't really want to <laughs> do it yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. The two of you uh, keep watch mm-hmm. until you think the others will be rested, and nothing else sneaks up on you. Nothing else happens. You can hear strange music. It seems to be coming from quite far away, nowhere near you, and it sort of fades in and out. But um, nothing moves near you, except the branches seem to just sway ever so slightly in a breeze. Well, hello, Skyons. I hope you're enjoying the first episode of season three. We had so much fun making it, and I can't wait for you all to hear what we have in store. Our ad today is for Live Laugh Lovecraft, who um, is actually run by an old school friend of mine. Um, Who knew our school turned out uh, RPG podcasters, huh? Live Laugh Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft meets Insert Funny Show here in this D&D podcast starring Steve Cross, Lucy Eckersley, Kate Hunter, Zoe McGee, and Sam McKay. It's my old schoolmate. You can find them on Lovecraft D&D on Instagram and Twitter and uh, their ad, which is coming up right now. Hello friends, I'm Sam, the Dungeon Master of Live, Laugh, Lovecraft, a horror comedy actual play podcast available everywhere that your your favourite podcasts live. Um, literally available exactly where your favourite podcast or rendezvous with destiny lives. On ACAST.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. Frankly, give it a Google, it'll be somewhere and then it'll be in your ear holes. It'll be great. Live Love Lovecraft is a Lovecraftian adventure starring four incredible comedians. But more than that, it is a deep dive into the world of 20th century science and goblin cookery. So why not take a seat at our table and allow our resident chef, Snookums Jolliver, to excite your taste buds in ways before today you could never possibly have imagined. Perhaps you could uh, have a look around and try and uh, find our, our goods. Uh, the porter will, of course, he'll help you. He knows his way around the city, and I'm not sure if you're local, but... Uh, uh, mate, if... before you go any further, have you got any tomato sauce I could put on this? Uh, uh, l- little man, have we got any tomato sauce back there? I mean, I'm not sure why you'd want any, but of course, give me a second. I just got to blend the oregano. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fucking Madeira? Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, we got lost in the other bloody shipment, didn't it? Right. Guess I'll just use port again. (laughs) 
you wake the others. Everyone is now awake. Um, Loki looks at all of you. Well, we do have some more climbing to do, but hopefully not too much longer. You can still see that string is being now attached to their hand, leading up the tree, continuing on this staircase of cracks and bark that you've been climbing up so long. Does it lead behind us as well? Like, is the string where we were still no. there? Okay, good. The string is not... I think... You're not, you're not even moving along a string. It's almost like... It's yes. It's pulling us. Cool. So once again, you climb this tree. But you do notice that as you... After being rested, your hands and knees are no longer cut and scraped. They seem That seems to have gone. But as you climb, it starts up again. And you climb for what you think might pass for half a day in this place. Before you... Before the, the string, the magic, leads you out onto another branch. And the string just continues along this branch. And this branch goes on and you cannot see the end, and you cannot see the end of the string, and you cannot see where it is leading you. This is a real brain blast. It's just so big, you know? Yeah, I... I can't really get my head around it. It's it's deeply unsettling. Um, it's, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I want to leave as soon as possible, I think. That's the thing about this place. We might only be here technically for a couple of hours. Wait, so even though we've been here for what feels like two days? Time doesn't work here, as you'd expect. I have a question, though. Yes? Do our bodies still age while we're in here? So we come back and we're like two days older than we actually are? Does that mean my birthday moves back two days? No. When you're here, the time you become part of this place while you walk its branches. So, if I dyed my hair while we were here, and then I came back out okay. because I was technically in stasis, yeah. it like wouldn't work? No, you'd dye your hair. Would the hair dye last longer because you were here? Hmm. That I don't like, know. I haven't reset. experimented if much you dyed your with hair, hair dye. In, really? It seems in, like it well, no, I've experimented a lot with hair dyes, not in Idrisil. Uh, I don't. I try not to come here if I don't have to. That is incredibly fair. If you had like a, an exam, you could come here and you could revise, and then you could go back out again, and you'd be like, "Oh, I've got so much time." You could, but you might die. Yeah, but you know, efficient. I'm gonna put my hand on Loki's shoulder and be like, "This is very obviously us trying to cope with this." in our tiny mortal brains, so... Yes, I'm, I'm aware. I'm also I'm also trying to cope. So I think we're all just going to be a little strange while this is going on. Yeah, while, while this is going on. Why don't we sing a song? Uh, Please, no. Like, like what? What did you have in mind? I don't know, like, you know those old like songs from summer camp and stuff? One, two, oh, no, sound please. off. Wait, you went to summer camp? Yeah. You're a big summer Did camp you not? Kind of guy? My mom no? wanted some time off from being a mom, and you know, with the summer, I was like, she she had every single day off because she's a teacher. So. So you just went to summer camp. Yeah, occasionally. Was no, it no, fun? it was pretty good. It's just like two weeks a year. It's fun enough. Hmm. Yeah, um, I went to quite a few. That's where I started learning fencing. Oh, that's awesome. Loki continues to lead you along this branch. Um, as you walk, every so often you see something out of the corner of your eye, some shift, some movement, but when you turn to look, there's nothing there. This keeps happening as you're walking along this branch, and it seems to be happening more and more often. And you can see everyone's looking round 
everyone's getting a little twitchy. Can we kind of talk about the uh, the elephant in the room here, guys, or the monster on the tree? Um, like, are you seeing that? Um, I'm, I don't know what I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just shy. You think it's like a friend? I don't. I think the chances are low, but I want to believe. It could be. Things up here aren't friendly, but I don't think... This doesn't seem malicious. It hasn't eaten Which is yet. worrying in and of itself. Just... Yeah. It just wants to hang out. Uh... uh can I take a little piece of, like, food and just put it down behind me without looking back yeah and then just keep you can you do that walking and as you're walking you can see you can see something in the distance um that you don't think should be on a branch it doesn't you can't tell what it is yet but it doesn't seem to fit in this place and as you get you're walking still you don't know how long you've been walking for, still following the string. As you get closer, you see it's almost like an old-fashioned circus tent. What? <gasps> what is happening? <laughs> Fun. Um, it's red, that red and white striped tent, with that circular tent. There's lots of material and flaps and scarves and ribbons hanging from it that's just fluttering in a breeze that you can't feel. And outside the door, there's a little sign, really lovely golden calligraphy. It just says, Fortune Soul. <gasps> I like look at Loki and Madison with big wide eyes, like, please. And the string is leading you directly yes! through the slight gap. Oh no. <laughs> in the doorway to the tent. Let's go! I mean, why is this worse than the sleep paralysis demon somehow? I can guarantee you it is not. That's true. It is. Oh. But it's worse in a different way. God. Gods, why? Why now? What do you mean? Okay. Well, we're gonna have to go in. We're going to have to go through this. Who is it? Um. Well, well you'll see when we get in. I don't really think I can explain very well. Um, let's just get this over with. Flora's gonna skip right in. You, you, you start to enter and you have to push these sort of like bits of diaphanous cloth and material and hanging beads out of the way. As you go inside, the, um, the tent seems bigger than it looks on the outside more space nice. TARDIS. but it's TARDIS tent. almost incredible it's incredibly stereotypical of exactly right. what you think this would be so there's this carpeted floor lots of very dark incense mm. lots of cushions like low tables and it's like, this it's so much a stereotype of itself it almost seems fake mm. nice and um, seated at there's a little low table in the middle um one you'd have to sit at cross-legged there's and there's cushions on the floor seated on one side are three <gasps> women yes that's what it's like that mm. huh? looking at them you can't really describe them their faces seem to shift they are faces but you can't tell what they look like but there are three women sitting there and as you enter they invite you all to sit down you can't see their mouths moving mm. you can hear three overlapping voices in your heads come mm. come sit would you like to hear a story um, I'm going to sit down promptly right in the middle and hold out my palm. <laughs> we'll get, get on to that later, dearie. 
Okay. But come, come, come and sit. sit. I'll weave you a tale. A tale of time. Time lost, a time found. A story that has yet to have an end. I think we are intrigued by what will happen this time. And that is where this episode is going to end. Wow. Mm. Ah. This is great because this means, Luce, you've timed it so perfectly that we're going to have like a very special episode next time because next next episode is going to be our one year anniversary. Oh, yeah. We've survived so, so cool. long. I, I couldn't help noticing so that ancient. the um, did it. Uh, the three fates, for that's who they are. Uh, Cleo doesn't know that, but Will does. Oh, sorry. Oh, not, it's not, not the fates. Not the fates. Not the fates. Um, <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> It's not the fates. You're a North North Times baby. Oh, they're the, the stars. North Times. Graham, do you could you think do you think you know who they are? I'm actually drawing a blanket. Oh, interesting. They're in American Gods. There's, yeah. There's like the North Star. No, they're not stars. Oh. I mean, they're moon. There's the three characters from the Frozen, but they're supposed to be Odin, which is so it's not them. I'm trying to think of anything that comes in threes. I I, I know what one of them one of them spins the, the thing, like, the other one measures three. it, and the third one cuts it. That's that's oh, right. the Greek fates. That is the Greek fates. These right, are the okay. Greek fates. Who are they? Oh, you have to find out next episode with you everyone else. Oh. Anyway, this has totally busted my uh, my smooth segue. It has. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, Go so for I it. couldn't help noticing um, that those three lovely people, I'm sure we'll find out more about next episode, um, were talking about weaving a tale. If people are more interested in, in, a, in another um, woven tale, Am, where might they be able to find that? Hee <laughs> hee, thank you. Um, yes, you can find me on Weave the Tales Twitch stream every Thursday at 8pm GMT until the first week of May. We are playing the Mora system, we're using the Ravenswood Academy arc. So we it's like a fun college for witches, except everyone hates us because we decided to not go with our houses and instead hang out with our cousins. Um, you can also Aww. find me on Deck of Many Aces, which is an actual play uh, D&D 5e podcast made by actual asexuals. Uh, you can find us at Deck of Many Aces on social media, Spotify, uh, wherever else you find good podcasts. And now, I think we're going to spit it on Graham again, just for fun. Yeah. Uh, if you want to listen to quality right. podcasts, what, what can you do for RWD? Well, of course, if you want to keep on track of what we're doing... Um... Update sneak peeks behind the scenes. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram, where our handles are both rwd underscore pod. You can also find through our Twitter and our link tree, we have a Discord server. Come and hang out with us. The link is there for you to join in. Um, you can ask us questions or just generally have a nice chat about tabletop role playing games and all kinds of fun things. Um, of course, if you want to listen to more RWD, our link tree is up there. You can find us wherever the good podcasts are, be that on Acast, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Yay, good job. No, That's amazing. Said anything. Yeah, that Congrats. was awesome. Well done, Graham. <laughs> Brilliant. I am so excited for this because last night, no- so the night before we recorded, I actually was talking about what tarot cards I would assign the girls. Oh, cute. What were you thinking? So I said mm. Flora's the fool. Mm-hmm. Um, I said Cleo is strength. Yeah. And I said Elspeth is the magician. Ooh. No, I said Elspeth is the hierophant, actually. Ooh, very nice. My bad. Ooh, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, it means fun things. Hee <laughs> hee. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. Um, but I'm very excited for all this future stuff. I feel like the very super secret questions Luce has asked us are about to come into play, mm-hmm. and I can't wait. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe some of them, maybe not, maybe not all of them, yeah. maybe not yet, Ooh. who knows? That's just doubly spooky. Who knows? Certainly not us. <laughs> not us, yeah. Oh, this is why I, I just love Norse mythology, because there's so much stuff I can be like, oh, I can just have so much fun.
This material is unofficial and is not endorsed by Onyx Path. We are claiming no ownership over Onyx Path intellectual properties, game systems, art or stories, which remain the properties of the rights holders. All characters, names and locations used are either public domain or are entirely fictional and bear no intended resemblance to their real life counterparts. If you have any legal issues, please contact us directly.